Welcome, Spartans, to the Podcast Evolved, part of Evolved, your home for Halo. Podcast Evolved hosts original lore series and recaps the monthly Halo news. I am your host, Oren, and with me today is Aaron. What's up, buddy? Hi, guys. I'm back again for another week. Yes, and what we haven't talked since you we saw each other in the flesh. Well, it's been several weeks. We've managed to see each other in person, and now we're back to the status quo. Yes, that was really cool. We'll have to talk about our experiences on another show, because for once, we actually have a pretty jammed show. Uh, not only do we have some news to cover, but this is also, technically speaking, our labeled 300th episode. We did it. I do like technically speaking. That's always very important. Yes. So if you are a big fan of the show, you know that we record a lot of different podcasts. So I guess you could say, technically speaking, this isn't our 300th episode. But in terms of uh, how we label things, this is our 300th episode. The last two weeks, we've done 299.5 and 299.6 to kind of get to this moment. I have some some little factoids to share with you before we really get started, if uh, if you care to listen. So this is Evolved 300. We started with Evolved. It was just Podcast Evolved almost nine years ago. We are actually one month away to the day of recording, May 7th, to our nine-year anniversary back in June 7th of 2014. And what's also kind of funny is that neither of us was on that episode that was recorded on June 7th. <laughs> No, that was before that was before us. That was quite some time ago. Before our time. I assume it was just Krista, Drew, Nate, and David. The four of them. Maybe we should have looked that part up, but it was probably the four of them. Yeah, I never thought to actually play it. It could have even been pre Nate, because I think it may have actually taken some coaxing to get Nate to go on the show as well. So we have our other shows. And I'll kind of go down the the least, or sorry, the most episodes to the least episodes. So we have evolved at three hundred. Next, we have mission debrief, which sits at a nice one hundred and forty six episodes, and uh, that of course covers all of our games and our playthroughs hosted by our very good friend Colin, with Krista and David and a little bit of Matt. From there, we have our Halo book club which is 86 episodes, and we're actually not done with Halo Book Club because they keep making more content for us, which is great, but we are up to date in terms of all the literary mediums like books and novels and short stories and comics. We are we are two content pieces behind, which are the two kind of uh, Halo Waypoint blog article stories, uh, so we'll, we'll get to those this year and then whatever else comes out and then we also have two more novels scheduled for 2023 so that will continue to grow and we'll go on from there then we have builds with blocks our brick-based construction set and minifigs show with uh, colin tom gabe and matt so that's at 39 uh, episodes then we have my show halo tv plus at 24 episodes which little tease there will be an episode 25 coming out very soon. If you're listening to this, just stay on the podcast feed or subscribe over to Halo TV Plus and you can listen to our coverage of the first season of the Halo TV show. We have one of those coming out soon. Then we have I Would Have Been Your Podcast, which is our Patreon exclusive show. We're at episode 12 of that. Um, if you haven't listened to that, then that means you're not a patron and you should become a patron and you have 12 bonus episodes of listening to our shenanigans of exclusive content. Honorable mention, Surv uh, Halo Survival, which is our, what is it, our audio drama that Tom kind of put together and and, and kind of streamlined and, and developed. There's six episodes of that. Then we kind of have our other shows that we've done throughout the years that we don't really keep track of. We have our head Halo Headlines, our Spoiler Cast episodes, and our Year in Review which we d we do still do. We do one of them every year now, but we don't really number them, so they're not included in our 300. So all that being said, if you were to add up Evolved, Mission Debrief, Halo TV+, Plus, Builds with Blocks, and Halo Book Club, this would be our 595th show, but that's also not including 299.5, 299.6, and 
maybe a couple of other episodes in there where we gave a 0.5, because I think we've done it once or twice before. And with Halo Survival being six episodes, we're just going to say that we've done over 600 episodes up until this point, but concretely, we've done about 597, including this one. So big round of applause to the entire Evolved team. So, another honorable mention, actually, we have uh, Halo Pro Talk, our friends over in the competitive scene. We haven't you know, really produced episodes with them, but they they are you know, with us in our umbrella of, of shows. I feel like you're getting dangerously close to Microsoft Bethesda territory here where you go, we acquired another group and we're going to count their numbers in our product. <laughs> I, I think you're getting dangerously close to Phil Spencer double talk here about first party output. Well, I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah, fuck it. We've got all these podcast episodes. We got them all. But no, those guys do their thing. We just kind of jump on each other's show every now and again, but yeah, I'm I'm not going to include their, those numbers in here. But you could you could argue, but yes, but let's call it over 600 episodes total across all of the evolved produced shows. This one's episode 300. It's a big big achievement that we should uh, recognize, and you know we're we're still floating around. We're approaching nine years, and Halo Infinite is still kicking. We got an E3-ish showcase coming up. Um, so yeah, big round of applause to everybody. Woohoo! I can try to name everybody, but we've, we've honestly gained members that I don't really know about. But yeah, there's like 15 of us at this point in terms of who's... There is a collection. There are quite a few of us. <laughs> we are legion. Uh, I have episode one loaded up in the barrel here. Do you want to hear the start of episode one and we'll find out together who was on that very first episode? I think I can stream this into the Skype call and everything. Okay, or we could just edit it in. Whatever whatever sounds better for the listeners. Either way, it's going to sound terrible. It's episode one, so uh, <laughs> don't have a lot of faith here in this, but it may get edited in. Right, to the website. I'm going to hit play and see what happens. Welcome Spartans, it's Friday, June 6, 2014, and this is Podcast Evolved, your new favorite Halo podcast. I'm your host, Drew, and I'm joined by David and Krista. And first of all, so, I want to say congratulations. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to barrel off. through you there. What's up, Krista? Uh, first of all, I wanted to say, though, uh, congratulations to Josh Bell for being selected as this month's Facebook banner. There we go. For the Podcast I'm going Evolved to... Facebook group and for the, the Facebook page. I'm putting it up on I'm going to hit pause on this now because we were so disorganized back then. I like... <laughs> I can't... That's, that was the first episode? Welcome to your new Halo... For, like, and then this is Krista and David. And then also... <laughs> we didn't do... This is the funny thing. I think they did the very first episodes on, like, Google Hangouts. So they didn't, like, do audio combined together or anything. So you didn't need oh, intro or anyone. So okay. just steamroll straight through it because you didn't need to sync anything up look behind the scene folks we say hi every week because i use that to line up where the hell our audio goes because otherwise it's a pain yeah i mean we, we could do the clap that's a pretty i've done that on other podcast episodes i've, I've but it's also on. nice to have your host say hello so you know which voice is which because a lot of people have mentioned over the years that they have particular trouble distinguishing between me and david even though I think we have very different sounding Irish accents. You guys accents, do have but... very different sounding Irish accents. That being said, though, I do flip you guys sometimes for some dumb reason. I don't know why. You just don't love us enough. It's fine. I guess not. But there you go. So that answers that question. The first episode was Drew, David, and Krista. What was the title? Was there a, is there a title for the episode? Or is that before we titled them? Oh, it just says episode one nothing else it was like a an e3 episode because that's pretty much when that started that yes that is correct that's what our because that's why our our anniversary is always around e3 because i think it's i think that was their predictions episode for that year for 2014 yeah that does sound right because that's why our anniversary is always around there well cool well awesome well yeah so happy 300 everybody that's kind of all we have planned um i know in the past we've done like you know trivia shows or had a special guest or I think for 200 we we thanked all the patrons so thank you patrons for keeping us afloat and all that we'll, we'll keep thanking you guys forever and ever forever and always but let me dive into the socials before we actually get started on this episode if you're uh, new to the show welcome evolved as a host to a variety of shows like i've already mentioned 
This is Podcast Evolved, where you can check out our current lore series, Infinite Impressions, and our previous lore series, The Road to Infinite, and our character dossiers. Evolved also hosts the show's Mission Debrief, Builds with Blocks, Halo uh, Book Club, Halo Gear Guide, Halo TV Plus, Halo Headlines, and HCS Pro Talk. You can learn more about each show on our website, EvolvedHalo.com. If you're already a fan of the show, we ask that you rate us and leave us a review. Greatly appreciate all of the feedback we receive from our listeners to improve the quality of our shows. We want to take this moment again to thank our patrons for their continued support. Your contributions allow us to continue making new content like this every week. And you have been for the last, well, we didn't launch the show in 2014, but, or sorry, we didn't launch the Patreon in 2014, but I think it was about 2018 or 19. So about five years on on Patreon. So you've extended the, 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 length, the length and breadth and life of our show. So thank you guys very, very much. If you're not subscribed, our patrons receive a variety of exclusive rewards, such as early episodes, unique swag, access to our podcast soundtrack, and our latest reward, an exclusive podcast show, I Would Have Been Your Podcast, which, like I said, there are 12 episodes deep. I'm going to be on an episode in the near future because I have not been on one in a little while, so I'm excited for that. And you can head over to patreon.com slash devolvedhalo to learn more. And finally, we encourage our listeners to support Audible, where they can enjoy the growing collection of Halo novels all in one place, along with thousands of other novels, guidance, wellness programs, and more. Use the URL audibletrial.com, podcast Evolved to learn more, and start your free trial today. And also, we have a new partnership and promotion that's been going on that we will play right now. This episode of Evolved is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped have all the tools for your manscaping needs like the Lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer and the Weed Whacker 2.0 ear and nose hair trimmer. Manscaped sent us their performance package 4.0. The uh, lawnmower actually looks great. I've been using it, keeping my face all nice and trimmed. I uh, use it in the shower. Things amazing. Works really quick. No complaints whatsoever. Yeah, I was actually really impressed with how it looks. It's quite stylish it's small it's black it's nice it has the led light on it it has two little guards that have like a double adjustment on each of them so you get four different trimming lengths with it a little charging dock that's USB-C. I think it goes for 90 minutes on a full charge it's pretty impressive yeah i love the charging dock it's USB-C, like you said and the whole the actual device is wireless you just stick it in you pick it up when you need it it's it's great it's it's super simple to use the Weed Whacker, which is uh, for the nose, also is really awesome. I've been using it probably but week, weekly at this point at my age. Uh, it works great. Nice and clean and neat and uh, no complaints from anyone. Yeah, no, I have only recently had to admit to hitting my mid-30s and needing a nose hair trimmer. This is the first one I've ever had. It's an interesting experience the first time you use one. I had very tickly. I sm- sneezed once or twice, but it did the job things are trimmed things are tidy it's styled similar to the lawnmower it looks quite nice it is not waterproof do not trim your nose hair in the shower very important (laughs) yes that's very very important note the set also includes their crop preserver below the waist deodorant and crop reviver below the waist toner which both smell really good i have to say yep i can agree with you there i sniffed them both and they both smell excellent yeah, there's even a set of Manscaped boxers, and everything came in a nice little travel bag, which it's been really great. I've keeping all my Manscaped stuff in there. I'm going to be taking it with me on my vacation coming up here shortly. It's, it's really nice. Yep, the boxers seem very nice. Uh, I am now only a medium, and when I was ordered this set, I was a large, so unfortunately they don't fit me particularly well, but they seem very nice, nice quality. Very impressed with the travel bag. It is now in my gym kit bag. It has permanent pride of place there. It's a very nice little travel bag, I have to say. I'm a sucker for little things like that. So if you've been thinking about upgrading your manscaping game, why not use the code EVOLVED at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping and try some Manscaped goodies today because your balls will thank you. So yes, that's our um, promotion with Manscaped, uh, who has kindly sent us the performance package 4.0 and uh for our personal usage uh i've i've used it once and really enjoyed it i haven't i haven't needed to use it a second time yet i 
have been using the the spray and lotion for for the below region, and uh, that's been really nice and soothing and refreshing. Just like if you were to use any sort of lotion or things on your hands or face, it's the same sort of skin care that you need for all parts of the body. Thank you for that, and I recommend everyone check it out. Now, last week on Zeta Halo, Aaron, have you done anything Halo related in the last week or so? <laughs> ha. Ha ha. No, I- I'm really sorry. I haven't. I don't know if I've done anything Halo related this side of Christmas. You've been planning today's episode for the last like two or three hours, right? That's what you did for the last week. That in Halo. totally counts. Yeah, with the exception <laughs> of the with the exception of playing Halo for the two Forge Finds episodes, I've not played a lot of Halo. I went into this on the last I would have been your podcast episode. So if you've listened to episode twelve, you'll have heard me talk about it with the input. I'm in a bit of a like non gaming funk at the minute where I just haven't been feeling any games so i it's not specifically the fault of halo that's another conversation that we can uh have in about 10 minutes <laughs> well i could have done with some campaign updates to get me back in i just really haven't been feeling much of any games at the minute so i think i've just generally been taking a break from gaming and doing some tv stuff instead that's mostly been me at the minute uh i am in the middle of The Last of Us, because I was late to watching that, I wanted to wait till it was all out, and then I watched a couple of episodes and then got busy and couldn't finish it anyway. So I need to do that. Caught up on Star Trek Picard. That was very good, but I've gone on about that a lot. And the next thing I'm going to watch is The Mandalorian, because that's all okay. out. Like, I kind of know most of the sort of big beats because TikTok ruins everything, but I'm not too panicked so i'm just gonna sit down and watch that i'll find something after that i've just been in a bit of a like chill and do other things mood at the minute and no games have really been calling to me and then this week all the news about how bad redfall is came out and was just like ah maybe i just don't need to play any games right now i forgot that game was scheduled to come out right now and a buddy of mine messaged me and was like have you played redfall yet it's and I was like no, and it was like it's terrible and I, it's a dumpster fire. And I was like, what's bad about it? And I listed like, I was like, is it the graphics? Is are there bugs? Is the story not great? Is the open world shallow? I like I like literally listed like six different things that are typically a problem. Did he just say yes? He said all of the above. <laughs> and I'm like oh no. <laughs> It sounds like all of that. I did see some people posting their recently screenshots from someone on Twitter being like, oh yeah, if you change all of the default controller settings to this, much more playable. And I was like, oh, that's never a good sign for yeah, a start. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah. I just, I really haven't been doing much with it. Uh, one of my friends acquired a, he calls it the Snitch. It's a knockoff Chinese uh, Steam Deck. It's a bit temperamental. It required a lot of updating. They recently released a dock for it, so he plays his Xbox stuff entirely through Game Pass streaming on this knockoff Switch and is currently having the best time of his life. And I'm like, I kind of want to do that, but also not, because sometimes it updates and resets and then he has to use Google Translate with the camera to understand the Chinese menus to change it back to English. <laughs> That's pretty great. It's It's one of those experiences. No, not a lot of gaming, not a lot of Halo, and just no real panic about it at the minute, I think. Maybe things will change this far side of June when we get our showcase and something exciting comes up or catches my interest, but as of right now, I am pretty much zero gaming at the minute. I echo a lot of the same things. I I dumped, I dove into season three of Infinite when it was re- released at the beginning of March, and I played that pretty consistently throughout the month. But then all of April, I also haven't really been playing Xbox too much. I, I dabbled in a little bit of Destiny because I was doing like a weekly thing that you had to do for like six weeks. It's really stupid, but like it's kind of just a time sink. But I, I but I moved at the end of April, and so I was also like packing and and doing things and, and work was you know still busy and all that um and my xbox live ha- and like game pass and all that has like expired and i haven't felt the need to re-up it because i haven't really been playing anything other than destiny and halo and both of them are free to play so i don't 
need a subscription to play them. Yeah, I I haven't done that. I don't have a TV in my. I'm currently staying with a coworker, and so I I'm like all my most of my stuff is in a storage container. So I don't even know when the next time I'm gonna play Xbox is. Maybe I can take it out and like play it in the office on the weekends when no one's here, since I already record podcasts on the weekends in the office. <laughs> You need one of those little screens for the Series S that attaches to the back of it and just like use it like a travel Honestly, console. Honestly, that's that's what I do need because I I'm living the nomad life for the next three months and traveling around the country and internationally. So it's uh, so yeah. But now I'm looking ahead on the um, on the notes that you're going to take us through, and, and there's an event going on. Maybe I should try to find a way to play halo in the next weeks since this event is up but yeah i haven't really been doing all that much halo because i've been busy with that but i I hope after the summer i can kind of get back into a new lifestyle since you know the last couple of months have been pretty crazy for me and uh so i hope i can kind of find whatever my new normal is and get some, some consistency get my video game blood pumping I'm sure E3 or I, you know, E3, quote unquote, but whatever the summer game show is, will reinvigorate me in the in the gaming of it all. But yeah, I'm just kind of also in like a not really video gamey mood. Now I have since I've been on the show in the while, I have developed a new hobby in bowling. I don't know if I've said that on the show before, but yeah, I'm like a big bowling fan now, and I like I'm gonna I'm gonna buy my own bowling ball after the summer. Oh, I have seen posts in your Instagram story, so I did notice you were bowling more often. I was looking through my credit card statement over the last like two or three, I guess two months, and every week there's a bowling charge because I was like, oh yeah, I've been going to the bowling alley like once a week. That's just my new hobby. (laughs) I only live 10 minutes away from a bowling alley, but I can't remember the last time I went bowling. It's like, it's fun. I could go bowling, but... I don't know why I never think of it as an activity. If anyone is like interested in bowling or like getting better in bowling, I highly recommend you take a, a class from a professional bowler that just teaches bowling because going to one of those classes just gives you these little tools to of how to adjust your throw. So like my biggest thing and my biggest frustration when I was before the, the class and I was like, oh, you know, I'm really enjoying bowling. I'm kind of good at it. But I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just like, okay, I have to try to bowl it straight and do this. But like every time I kind of try to do that, there was still like some uncertainty in my in my approach and in my throws. But then going to the going to the class and like the lesson, it was like an hour and a half, and it was like, oh, well, if I do this and stand this way and my hips are here, then like this is why the ball does this. And so, like, if I bowl and it's like, oh, that ball went way to the left. I'm like, okay, well, I know what I did wrong. Or I'm in, maybe I'm in a different bowling alley and the lane is not as oiled or I'm using a different size ball because I don't have my own ball yet. It's like I can I can feel what I'm doing. And so I, I'm able to, I don't know, be smarter about playing the game. You know, I'm not a pro and I'm not breaking 200 or anything like that. But, like, I as long as I'm consistently hitting pins down lane... Like, that's a great game for me, and I enjoy the kind of, you know, sport of it, as you would if you played any other type of sport. So anyway, that's what's going on with me. I'll dive deeper into that in a, I would have been your podcast episode, but today we're going to talk about Halo. So Aaron, you are going to take us through the news for the month of May. Is that correct? If I must. Well, (laughs) it's actually the, the end of April, not May, because we're only into May. You wrote that wrong. It, uh, this is April news. Did I write it anywhere? It's the May update. Is that what threw you? Ah, that is what threw me. The May update. Yes. The May update. Our first bit of April news. Yes, I have got your back here. Don't you worry. This is actually half of April's news because the last news show we did ran a bit late from March. So we already covered a little bit. So no need to talk about Frank O'Connor leaving 343 and stuff like that. Go listen to the last news episode. Oh, Frank left as well. Yep. Uh, it seems to have been a big clear out. There's a lot of a lot of heads rolling, I think. Need to see what way the dust settles and all that. Yeah. It seems like a clear out, but it's too early to really say anything. We'll need to see... I don't know who, if they have any Halo information this year at this showcase. I don't know who they're going to wheel out on stage, but like they may be down to the janitor soon. 
<laughs> oh goodness. It seems like a lot of senior peoples have all gone, so be curious to see who's up there, but anyway, we'll not get stuck in that for now. We will cover the May update because we have info here. As of the time of recording, the current live event is Sight Unseen. That is running until May 16th, and when this goes live, you will have two days left to finish that. May 16th, that is a free 10 tier event pass with rewards for your Mirage Armor Core. We have news that Super Fiesta is returning with campaign unique weapon variants and fully upgraded equipment as they enter the arena, so that should be a lot of fun. Ranked King of the Hill. I have some info here on updates. So based on player feedbacks, the hill will now respawn in faster at the start of the match and no longer have a wind-up time when a player initially enters it. So there's four bullet points for the update here. I just threw them all in. The initial hill spawn time has been reduced from 15 seconds to 5 seconds. They basically said... That was to force teams at the start of the game to make a decision. Were they going to go for the hill or were they going to go and secure weapons? You've only got five seconds. You've got to decide one or the other and you can't really do both. The wind-up period to score has been removed. So as soon as you are in the hill, you are scoring. Players can score right away. There we go. When they step in the hill. And this allows players to quickly score while maneuvering grenades to avoid damage. That, That all seems reasonable. They are making changes to the Disruptor as well. So, they are removing the damage over time from the Disruptor in multiplayer. They are going to reduce the chain distance from 5 world units to 2.5. So that basically means when you overcharge, it changes chains damage across players. So that will be a shorter distance. They have increased the super combine damage from 60 to 70. And they have increased the rate of fire from 4.28 to 5 rounds per second only a minor change there changes to that I, I think the uh, the damage over time one's probably the biggest because sometimes I was relying on that to like finish off an enemy that is true I, I also kind of was like thinking if I shot them enough then the damage over time would eventually kill them but it never did and or maybe it did but like chances are I was like oh I need to get maybe I needed one more shot or whatever to to do it 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 was very inconsistent or rather i couldn't i didn't use it enough to get a feel for how much damage the damage over time really did i wonder if does the dynamo grenade also did they remove there is an update i will i will skip them here and go to this one so we can do dynamo grenade next they have reduced the shock area of effect from 3.5 world units to two units They have reduced shock chain distance from 5 world units to 2, so it's still got chain distance. They have increased shock damage per burst from 18 to 21. They have removed movement stun from the shock damage. They have lowered the arming time from 0.65 to 0.5 seconds. And they have reduced the delay between shock damage pulses from 0.03 to 0.02, or from 0.3 0.3 to 0.25 seconds and added one additional shock damage pulse at 2.5 seconds so basically okay so they there's still damage over time i guess because you're i guess it's only damaging while you're in yeah it's only while it's pulsing at you gotcha that makes sense that makes... yeah they have tweaked a few things in it as well so the spike grenade that's another one they have increased the number of flechette sub new missions that are released on detonation from 8 to 16 so they've doubled those but they have reduced the travel distance from 5 to 3.5 world units so there is more explosive debris but at a shorter range in a sh- yeah yeah okay but that's a more concentrated area so that might actually be a good thing reduced area of effect damage radius from 3.2 world units to 2 world units Reduced area of effect damage amount from 300 to 160 and adjusted flechette bounce behavior to deviate less. Basically made it more deadly in a smaller area is what I'm taking away from this. And it's it's still an overall buff because they, they doubled the detonations, but they didn't, they, they cut the damage by almost half, but not quite half. So it's still a little bit of a buff there. Yeah. And then obviously more deadly if you're like right next to it. Yeah, so you might notice if you change feelings with that and see how you get on with it. The shroud screen is being updated in Arena to only have one charge and pick up. So they're trying to make it more strategic about when you use the shroud screen. 
that's something to keep in mind. You'll only have one to fire and go. There's some stuff coming to Forge. So PC screenshotting and bug fixes will be coming and they have updated the script brains and capped them at 128 nodes. Uh, this is to help with, I think, frame rates and stuff in some Forge maps. But they have said that existing larger script brains won't be affected. You just won't be able to expand them anymore. Mm. They won't break your existing map, but you'll not be able to make them for new maps. I wonder if you tweak it and you start reducing nodes if you can't restore those nodes. Like Say, say you have a script that goes 140, but you want to tweak it and you bring it down to 100. And, like, is, is that cap 140 or if as you take nodes away... I mean, this is a super like specific question, but that is a Steve and Nate question for Forge Finds episode three. Uh, send that email into the show, and we will ask that next time I'm on with them. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll leave a voicemail as well. Yeah, leave a voicemail, and we'll play that on the show. That's a little beyond me in Forge details. There are a couple of UI UX updates as well. They are adding a FPS counter for console, so you will be able to see your frames. So now you will know if you're getting less frames, even if your eyes can't tell. The custom game browser will be accessible from the custom game options on the main menu, making things a bit easier to get to. Matchmaking menus will be updated to display 10 playlists at a time instead of the current five. So that's always good. Yeah, that's a great change. Uh, I think it said somewhere there specifically that when you scroll down through them now, you won't get the image for the playlist until you click into it. I think that's how they're doing it. You'll have 10, 10 options now you'll be able to see. A selection of bundles from previous seasons will be available to be purchased through the customization menu. When checking out an item that was part of an eligible bundle, players will now be presented with the option to view and purchase that bundle from the store. I'm happy about that because there is one coat of paint for my Mark V armor that I want and it was in a previous bundle or event and it's no longer available for sale and I want to go see if it's now available because I will buy it. I want to go and check when that's out and have a play with it. Fingers crossed. I will not be playing any Infinite at the minute, but I will buy that skin because I want that paint job. Let's see. What have we got next? This next article was a little post about Master Chief Collection getting a Steam Deck update. There was a post on Waypoint and it said at the top that today's update for Halo the Master Chief Collection upgrades Steam Deck compatibility from unsupported to playable. Enabling players on Steam Deck to access modes that require easy anti-cheats such as multiplayer matchmaking and the custom game browser. Future updates for MCC will continue to improve Steam Deck compatibility as well. It then goes on to have a list of currently known issues with Master Chief Collection Steam Deck. So you can go and read those off the support post itself. I think there were a few things like when you launched the game and wanted to launch it without anti-cheat. The option the menu options were actually back to front so when you click launch without anti-cheat it actually launches with anti-cheat and when you click launch with anti-cheat it launches without anti-cheat so there's a couple of little things they need to fix there but master chief collection on a steam deck sounds awesome handheld halo is something we have longed for i wanted master chief collection on switch (laughs) if you have a steam deck out there give it a go let us know how it plays what do you think of it is it fun? Do I need to buy a Steam Deck? Even though I'm not playing any games at the minute, because, you know, you can always spend more money. That's always a good thing. That's why you have money, just to spend it. Yeah, who needs savings? Spend it all. Okay, this next one now, we have some information on the Halo TV show. So, Pablo Scryer posted on Instagram, and he was thanking the team for all their efforts and working their ass off to help uh, make the performance in the show possible and someone in the comments asked him whether or not the show was wrapped filming for season two and he responded that yes indeed it was nice season two is stopped filming and finished complete but that does not mean the show is anywhere near ready to come out because it will be all the i assume post-production and cg stuff will be yeah feverishly underway so that's what yeah just to give a little tease of what we're going to talk about in the next episode of Halo TV Plus. We're going to talk a little bit about this post. We'll look at the timeline between when season one finished and when that release date was so we can predict when it might come out as well as the writer's strike that's currently going on uh, and how that might affect the show. So there's a, there's a little bit to talk about and we'll we'll make a day of it. Yeah, it's always good to get another episode. Uh, it'll be 
a bit of time, I think, before we get regular season two episodes. What do we think? This, not this year. Definitely not. Of season two of the show? I think it's optimistic that we get it at the by the end of the year. I have a feeling they'll want to keep the same March release and do it next year. That's what my gut tells me. But we can, but we'll die. We'll talk about it on the show. I, I'll do. You know, I have some research to kind of share with everybody, and there's it kind of backs up a little bit what I'm saying. And but you know, happy to see what other people think. Yep. Save that prediction, guys. Remember later whether or not he was right or wrong. One last piece of news, so this will be relevant to listeners because it will form part of our schedule. The Xbox 2023 Showcase has been announced for June 11th. It will be 10am Pacific Time on Twitch, YouTube and Facebook. And immediately after the Showcase, there'll be a Bethesda Starfield Direct deep dive. There will be a follow-up stream, Xbox Game Showcase Extended Airing, June 13th at 10am Pacific Time with in-depth interviews focused on news from our Xbox Game Showcase, as well as game updates from our partners. Exciting stuff. It's almost here. Now, we did get the sad news before that E3 is cancelled and dead. Uh, Long live E3. So Xbox haven't been at E3 in a while. How long have they been doing their own showcase now? Is this the third year or fourth? Well, definitely 2020, they did a showcase, and then 21, 22, and then this would be 23. So this would be the fourth year. And I'm trying to think if they went to 2021, but I I believe they did. But Xbox and even like Sony and Nintendo, they've always been doing like other shows separate than E3. But Phil Spencer did defend E3 for a while saying like, we like the showcase. We like being in front of people. We like the grandstand of the stage and all that. But yeah, I think I think uh, if you want to include the 2020 sort of like direct video thing that they that they did, then this would be the fourth year since they've done that. But I, I don't know if did they try to revive E3 after COVID? I think they did. They did one. That wasn't that when they like was that when they let the public in and like tried to turn it into full on. I think so. I think that was yeah. I think COVID helped kill E3. And then they try to invite guests. And honestly, that might have been for 2020 when they started doing that. But then they ended up canceling it because of COVID. Yeah, my memory is a little fuzzy there. But but yeah, well, there was one year where they put it on. They did the thing. They invited fans. And they also had publishers and stuff. But by that point, it was already like too late. Because people are like, we're already not going. And why are we going to go to this now fan fest when we're supposed to be going there as like reporters to catch up on like the latest and greatest in the electronics world? It's been going that way for a while. It's sad, but uh, it is what it is. I think it's a different time now. So I'm curious to see what all picks up from its ashes because I like I don't think Gamescom is going to replace it because it's just a different beast altogether. Yeah, they're really two different venues and stuff like that. So, Jeff Keighley's show kind of fills the niche, but it's not E3. It's just a show. You know, it's it's not the same as the entire event. Honestly, for me, like I don't even know if they're doing it this year, but really the giant bombs E3 stuff was my E3 stuff. And then with COVID and everything else, that all went a bit weird. And I haven't really been as excited about E3 since. <laughs> Giant Bombs E3 nights were the best. Yeah, those are those are great. Phil Spencer and stuff chat with them was always good. So yeah, those are good. Um, ah, oh, we will see. Hopefully, they have some good stuff. They bloody need some stuff to show the way this year is going. Starfield needs to be good, and they need to show us some other stuff. So we will have to see what we get. I think uh, Starfield is currently carrying Microsoft on its back right now. Yeah, it's it's got to. Well, we do have Diablo Four coming out this summer. Do we think that's going to be good? Do we hope so? I hope it is. But I would I would say Starfield is more widely anticipated than Diablo 4. But they're both action RPGs. But I think maybe Starfield's more of a more traditional RPG because it's a first person. Or th- no, it's a third person. I don't even know. Anyway, we'll figure it out. We'll see what happens. We'll cover it. Last year, I think we did we did three teams. 
we did three teams. We did the live stream with Chris, and we did the pre predictions episode as well. So. Yeah, we did a bunch of stuff for it. So I don't know if we'll go all out this year because everyone's running around and busy, but we'll definitely have you know one or two teams covering the show and probably a live stream. Yeah, we will. We will churn out some content from this. So we will see what happens. That is pretty much all of the news to get us up to date for now. Nothing else particularly major that we haven't already covered. I have a few Community Evolved topics if we want to go over them. Oh, sure. Yeah, I posted a little bit on the Discord and I got some replies from folks, so we can rumble through these. I just posted and said that we're going to be recording episode 300, and if anyone has any thoughts, anything they want to talk to us about, drop us a line. So, first up, I had Master Chief from the Discord. Hello, Master Chief. Thank you for your service. Oh, yes. I didn't realize he was a listener. That's awesome. It is. He asks, Why is 343 so afraid of using the Flood? The last time we saw the Flood was in Halo 3. Halo Wars 2 doesn't count. Mm, I think it counts. I think 343 wants to have more variety and have more diversity in their enemies, and I think that's why they created the Banished and they're doubling down with the Banished because they tried removing the Covenant and we just kind of wanted to fight more of the Covenant, but the Covenant, like, lore-wise, got disbanded, so they brought the Banish, which is, like, a reskinned Covenant, because everyone, I guess, didn't really like playing against the Prometheans. I kind of liked a little bit of it. Halo 4 was a little crazy, but I thought Halo 5 was a better balance with all the armor abilities and stuff and the sandbox. But I don't know. I think reintroducing the threat of the Flood is always tricky, and I feel like the way they did it in Halo Wars 2 was nice because it really was nice and contained because it was just left over from the crashed high charity. But yeah, I mean, like you could only do the it, the galactic peril of the galaxy, <laughs> you know, so many times. So I, I think that that might be why they're afraid. If they open the can of worms that are the flood, they could just retrace what Halo 2 and Halo 3 did. So that'd be my... I think that's reasonably fair. Like you you open the floodgates for, for the flood. Sorry. That's like the countdown to Halo 3 part 2. Yeah. And I mean, and if you look at the original trilogy, like Halo 1, they blew up the ring to stop the flood. Halo 2, it was a lot of like inner politics and stuff between, you know, the Arbiter and stuff. But like, it was about not... How do I word this? Like the covenant, the covenant was looking for Earth, and so like you kind of had this this chaos of the covenant looking for Earth, and they they find Earth, and then they go away, and they're trying to activate the ring, but the flood is also so it just gets a little complicated. But then at the end of it all, what do they do? They blow up the ring to stop the flood. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, like Halo Two was supposed to be, you know, Cortana blowing up High Charity to stop the flood, and that didn't work. And then Halo Three is blowing up the ring again to stop the flood. And then you've got Halo Wars. But like, I suppose the problem is you could do like a contained flood story, but you're in real danger of just making dead space in Halo. But I don't think that's a problem. I, I just think it's it, it's it gets touchy as soon as the threat gets any bigger than like one instance or one game. But then it's also like we've already kind of played it. You know, at least they try to do something new with the Banish, but also the Banish just... Is kind of just the covenant again with boss fights. Yeah, I would like another, like I would like a self-contained flood story, but like I said, it just becomes dead space if you're on a ship that's infected by the flood or you're on a planet that's self-contained that's infected by the flood. It's just sort of that sort of game. But also, they're the most versatile enemy because you can make anything and be like, oh yeah, that's a flood form. That's a flood form. That's a flood form. You know, whatever you need. So, like, it's cool that way as long as you're happy with everything having the same gooey, fleshy skin on it. I'd like to see more Flood, but I think we'll be waiting quite some time. I'm not going to hold my breath. Right, next one here from DeSudo. I'm sorry, DeSudo, we didn't do this. He says, I just want one of you to open episode 300 with This is Sparta. I mean, if Aaron gave me this prompt before we started recording, I would have definitely done it. I guess we could just re-record it. Now, what I'm actually just going to do is rip the audio of this is Sparta and post it in at the start of the episode instead over the intro music. 
Yeah, do that. So we will just rip that from 300 and hope that we don't get sued. Thanks. I mean, just keep it like under six seconds or something. Yep, it'll be your fault to sue if they do. I'm just telling you now. But we, we will hopefully, if I haven't been lazy editing, we will accomplish that request. I, I did read it and then I forgot about it because we got talking. We distracted Classic. Ourselves. Noble Sex posted, What one Halo moment will always stand out to you? For me, it was when I first had the music swell in Halo 4 on the level Requiem. Halo 4 was my first game in the Halo series and that moment showed me just how much more intricate these games were than anything I'd ever played before. I'm actually really curious to know what you all have to say about that. That's a good question. Yeah, Halo moment. The quick one that comes to mind, but it's probably a lot of people, is in Halo 3, just before Floodgate, when you've destroyed the anti air gun and you're standing on the cliff with the Arbiter and Hood comes in with the frigates and tries to attack the key ship. That whole scene's quite a lot of fun. I like that. And then shortly after that, the following scene, the cutscene where they roam into the uh, the Ark and they have the space battle. Those are quite good moments. In terms of actual in-game moments, hmm. In-game moment, I'm going to go with actually breaching the far side of the wall on the arc in Halo 3 when you come out the far side of the tunnel and you jump in either the Warthog or the tank and you have to fight your way down the, down the cliff and take out the scorpions and everything. I quite like that. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. I might like that more than the actual end fight with the two scarabs. I was going to say, because like, I would almost argue that like driving the chink and the covenant in Halo 3, when you make that turn and then you see the whole arena of this of the of the level where the two scarabs drop in and then you get out of the tank and hop in the, fa- the Falcon, that's a pretty cool moment Oh, in terms of just scale and stuff. Yeah, I have one other, but it's more so it'll feed into the next question because it's kind of an atmosphere for the music, but... In the level Guardian in Halo 5, when you start that mission off and you spawn on the side of the Guardian, the side of the Guardian facing like vertical towards the ground and you have to run down the surface of the Guardian, that is, I think that's my most fun moment in all of Halo 5. Like that, just that little sequence is so much fun. Especially when you find out that you can hover to scope but when you hover to scope, you also fall at the same time. So you don't <laughs> fall back down to the surface, but you still continue to plummet towards the ground. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was good physics. So I, I have two as well. Um, I mean, there's so many moments, but like my my big like cinematic one, it, I've said, you know, a dozen times, and I'm sure it's a lot of people's favorites, giving the Covenant back their bomb in Halo 2. Like that cutscene is just so beautiful. And like, it it's just... It just really gives you the fantasy of being a space marine and uh, and just a big win for the UNSC. And it's just like, it just was like really, really invigorates you to just keep playing the game. And like, that's that's how Halo 2 like really starts. And you're just like, hell yeah, let's let's like get into this and squash these alien brains. Like, so that for me is like always going to be my favorite cinematic in terms of gameplay moment, um, something that's come to me while thinking about it right now is is an ODST when you first get out of the pod and you're walking around the the streets, Mombasa streets at night, and like the the music is so kind of quiet and you're alone, you're not really facing a lot of enemies, and you're just walking around trying to figure out where you go and. And you get the beeps of the superintendent and kind of some of the other security systems and like the the atmosphere and sound design and and that really pulls you into that that game and and then again it kind of just launches you once you find your first clue and then every time you go back to Mombasa streets it just gets a little bit more challenging there's a little bit more occupation and and stuff like that and so that that was a very different way to play Halo. And so I remember playing that uh, for the first time of just like, wow, this is not what I thought it was going to be like, but just like instantly being intrigued and and enjoying and wanting to play more of it. I think those are both pretty solid moments. I, I don't have anything else to add to this. I think those are ours. If you have a favorite moment, you can write in and tell us. We'll mention it. We'll give you an honorable mention on the next one. Stephen Paluski asks, what Halo song do you listen to on repeat? Personally, my most played Halo song is Trapped in Amber. Love that. Some Luke Chill. 
or Love Me Some Loop Chill. Do you have a top Halo song? I do listen to the Halo 2 soundtrack a little often, and there is one song. Let me look for it. I think it's Impart. Yeah, Impart. This is, I don't know if it's the original Halo 2, but this is the anniversary album that I have. But Impart, you're, it's, it's when you play, I believe, is it Uprising? Is that the mission or the the mission before upright is uprising the last mission but it's it's when you're the it's when you're the arbiter and you have to rescue other sanghealy and other elite forces against the brutes does that song flare up when you in when you enter like the chamber of the arbiters or something is it around there i have like no that's master chief you're playing at that stage isn't it i like i can picture the music in my head but i just can't picture the little bit you're playing when that hits it's it's like it's when you're going through all those interiors and you're like and you go like into the caves and there's brutes and jackals shooting at you and you you rescue like some hunters and then the hunters attack all the brutes and and all that kind of stuff. I think it's called yeah, I think it's called Uprising. It's not the la- yeah, so the great journey is the last submission, but it's yeah, it's Uprising. So it's after you've retrieved the the index and all that as the arbiter. Um, or you actually don't retrieve it. Tartarus retrieves it. But yeah, that part's just it's so cool. It's it's kind of like, I don't know, a little el- electric, but it has like a nice beat to it. And uh and then you have the the chants in the back background also just doing the the Oz and kind of going higher and higher and, and just kind of gets you in like a, a funky vibe, I think. And uh so I've I've been a fan of of that one. I mean the uh, the Breaking Benjamin song in the original Halo Two for that fight at the end of High Charity. That's that's a classic. It's funny because like there's a lot of really good songs, but like when because like when we were doing our soundtrack for the podcast, we all listened to like all of the soundtracks and we're like, what's what songs do we like? What songs do we want kind of remade into our own? Uh, version and I remember going through a bunch of the options and and like we even had like meetings about this where we would be like all right we like this song and we did this and we eventually got to our like top 20 or top 15 songs that we gave Trey thank you Trey but like there there was a time where like I wouldn't even listen to the Halo soundtrack and I would just listen to our soundtrack because it was just so so good there's a Pale Horse song as well Pale Horse is a good song is it just called Pale Horse? I, mean, I think it's Pale Horse. I think it's in Halo 3. Is that the... There's Behold a Pale Horse, which is a remake of On a Pale Horse from Halo 1. Yeah, this is this is the Covenant. I was going to say that is when you're coming in at the start of the Covenant and the Pelicans are shot down. Interesting, all of yours are Bungie picks because all of mine are 343. I do have the Halo 5 soundtrack on vinyl that I've listened to not recently. Oh, but what's what's the freaking dope ass Halo 5 song? Is it The Trials? Yes, The Trials is one of the great ones on it. I have listened to that a lot. Yeah. No, it's a toss up in Halo 5 between actually there's Osiris Suite Act 3, which is a very good song. Uh, well, Suite of Music and Advent, which is the song from the scene where you're scaling down the side of the Guardian. It is oh, okay. very good. I like that a lot. Uh, Blue Team's quite good, but 117 from Halo 4, I still think, is possibly the best Halo song ever written. The place where you, I think, hear it the best is when you're doing the uh, the flight mission, the trench run. That um, You get that song there, but like that, that whole tune is just spectacular. 117, I think, is one of the best Halo tunes ever made. I will fight people over that. <laughs> Looking through the others here, what have I got? In part of Halo 2, The Light at the End for ODST, that's on my list of played fairly often. One Final Effort from Halo 3, rather good. Delta Halo Suite from Halo 2, Behold a Pale Horse of that as well. Rock in a Hard Place off the Combat Evolved Anniversary soundtrack, another good shout out. Yeah, that's pretty much all of the big ones I have on my like most listened to list, but I think 117 might be the single best piece of music ever written for Halo. That would be like that would be my absolute pick there for that. 
if we were going to have to go for it. So, right. I've got one more question and then we will wrap this baby. Elson94 asks, I guess I'll ask a lore question. What obscure timeline location character would you like to have a story for? And what medium would you like it to be told in? So it's a two-parter. So that's the first question. Obscure timeline location or character? If I was going just off the top of my head. Well, it's kind of weird, right? Because it's like, if it's a lore story, then there's already some sort of medium about it. Well, I guess not necessarily. There can be sometimes. I think I would like the full Franklin Mendez story. Like, I know we get bits and pieces of it, but I just like a Mendez book in his prime. Kind of like the impossible life and possible death. Yeah, like there's there's that period of time between like the Spartan 2s and 3 when Mendez gets reassigned to service. There's bits and pieces. I feel like you could cover enough there. I would also, now that you've mentioned it, I would love an update on Preston Cole, but we're probably not going to get that. Although that's not that obscure anymore because we have a whole story on it. That'd probably be the two that jump straight to mind because we sort of have... We've gotten pretty good these days with like follow-ups to a lot of things. Like we have Guilty Spark. Yeah, we got Guilty Spark, we got the Rookie. Contact Harvest. Yeah, Johnson's kind of pretty fleshed out. You know, I wouldn't mind finding out what happens to Soren, because we get him in a TV show, but like in the short story Pariah, he just escapes into the woods, and he's just out and about. So maybe that would be an interesting recap to kind of not recap but like you know see what's going on with him and what he's doing in his part of the universe i mean we don't really know much about the endless that's kind of a cop out because that's just the next story in halo but they're pretty obscure i think it would be cool to learn more from a military militaristic point of view of like the forerunner flood war because like we we kind of just get that information kind of like retold to us as if it was like a history book but like we don't really follow like a character like you would like a platoon of odsts or the platoon or like a, a fire team of spartans kind of like i don't know like i feel like that could be interesting to kind of see the way the forerunners actually like operate from like a promethean point of view as opposed to like the didact or the master builder or whomever kind of telling us what happens. Does that make sense? I'm trying to get a slightly different point of view. I could go for that. I think the only other thing I could maybe go for is like a the alternate history of like a detailed alternate history of humanity up to the current timeline. Like the pre the pre discovering aliens humanity. I wanna hear like the early days of the like we cover some of this here and there in various stories, but I wanna hear about like the colony wars and the colony ships going out into that space. Is, yeah, and okay. Shit like that. That I know that's sort of like expanse territory, but I feel like we've got a lot of the big stuff kind of answered. Maybe there's a really good story to be told about that ship that crashes on the Halo in the Combat Evolved Anniversary terminals. You know the one that Guilty Spark like bricks up and leaves there? No, I don't remember that. It's in one of the scenes. It's basically Guilty Spark. This ship crashes. No one comes out of it. And he's like, oh, containment says I must seal it up in the tomb. And then he's like, but when the next ship lands, I'm going to go and talk to them. And that happens to be thousands of years later. And it's the Pillar of Autumn. It's like just backstory to that. But like, maybe that ship was really cool. I don't know. We've got a lot of the other stuff. I could, I don't really have much else. I'd love to know what's happening to the Eternity. Yeah, or the Spirit of Fire. Uh, I would love this. Yes, it's not obscure, but I'd love the fucking not, answer yeah. to how that <laughs> ship got to the Ark. In terms of just general, like, what medium stuff to be told in, like, I kind of just want more Halo events to be told in the TV show. Like, I want, like, like I get that it's its own timeline, but I feel like you could still give some fan service and have the Fall of Reach or, you know, different things like that. The discover. I mean, they technically they kind of discovered Halo, but like they didn't really go on a Halo ring and like really discover it and see the Forerunner stuff. So like, I'd want to I'd want to see a little bit more of that in the TV show. How about the adventures of young Parangoski as she murders her way to the top of Oni? I like that. Parangoski's great. You know what? I want to know what's up with with 
this is kind of just picking up on lost storylines, kind of what this question turned into. But like Osman and Lord Hood over on Rossbox World with BB and some of the other AIs, like what's going on over there? Like, um, everyone got rescued by let's say Mo. <laughs> Honestly, they probably did just get rescued. They're probably just going to be on some ship or in the infinity whenever we find the infinity. This other question might be a bit big. We may have to save this for another day. I feel like this is maybe worthy of a discussion with a few people, but it's uh, if you would ever play a D&D game set in the Halo universe, what would be your character and what is their backstory? I would need so much time. Yeah, this could go so many different ways. I I I have never played D&D, but I have fallen down the horrible sinkhole that is D&D TikTok. So oh, goodness. every so often I get the craving to play D&D. And the last time I said that out loud, Ian rather violently shouted, no, don't do it. Yeah, I've watched a few D&D sessions of, of like people on the internet and like it's fun, it's creative and all that. But like what's great is that it's already edited. I can pause and play it whenever, you know, whenever I want. But like to actually play D and D and devote the X amount of hours, like that's just a lifestyle I can't really jump into. So I haven't really played D and D ever. But like I do enjoy the fantasy of like creating a character and learning the world and the the politics and all this kind of stuff. Like that is very interesting and creative. And yeah, Halo definitely has a huge universe that you could just tap right into. But yeah, if we want to save this. Yeah, I think we should save this for another day when we have a few more people on. But the actual answer to this question is, I'm not going to play Halo d and I want to play an RPG based in the Forerunner times, and I just want to be like a Forerunner with a ridiculous stat tree that I can slowly <laughs> evolve, evolve out my Forerunner and go whichever direction I want. And depending on which class you go into, we'll cut off various things and add various quests. That's the way to do it. Just have a Forerunner RPG. Come on, 343. You are literally throwing money away. What I'll say real quick, because like I said, this can be a, like you said, it could be a whole conversation, but like, I feel like one of, one of the better stories to kind of bridge off from in a and d story would be the Ace of Spades. What's what's her name? With Into the Fire, Forge, Forge's daughter. Ryan Forge. Ryan Forge, yeah, like you have these like band of smugglers and you just kind of like set off on your your adventure and you can get thrown into whatever situations in your D&D settings. You could be with the Insurrection, you could be with the UNSC, you could be with the Banished and all this kind of stuff. And I would probably want to be like a Kigyar, like a Kigyar sniper or like some sort of like like treasure goblin type of a Kigyar that just wants the best gear or something like that or if not that i'm a big fan of like brawlers and stuff so like i wouldn't mind like some sort of macho individual that just like punches their way through things kind of like soren who who's like a you know deformed brute but not a brute brute so but yeah that's interesting yeah we should get more people on and throw that up for my just random suggestion there i'm gonna say hunter I'll just be a hunter. (laughs) I mean, a hunter would be pretty cool to like also get into the fantasy that you're worms, you know, like you could be in the armor and then say you get to some other sort of D&D encounter and it's like, all right, well, I slither out of my armor and I am now a torpedo of worms, a wave of worms that goes and does things that that's some pretty cool fantasy. See, there's there's potential, but I think that will be a someday question. That may have to be one of the weeks when we don't have a lot to talk about. We will have to like make this an entire episode, I think. Maybe we should just do a and d campaign. When, when, when it's so low and we can't do any shows, instead of podcasting, we just do a DD and d we just... We just become like every other nerd podcast and just become a D&D yeah, exactly. podcast. <laughs> Pretty much. Because that market's still got so much room to like maneuver there. Yeah. Right. I think that will do us for now. There is a little Evolved Digest info here, and then we can wrap it for today. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll take us through this real quick, and then we'll, we'll take us home. We have Podcast Evolved, which is this show. We're doing our Infinite Impressions lore series, which are topics and opinions relating to the ongoing support of Halo Infinite's campaign, Multiplayer, and Forge. 
So our most recent impression was uh, on episode 299.6, Forge Finds number two. And honestly, our next one will probably be Forge Finds number three because we have all of the um, Halo or your E3 coverage going on. Maybe the next impressions is like any sort of Halo announcement that comes out and we talk about that. That could be our next impressions, but it's you know a little light and we'll kind of just do that. But also... We have like season three reactions once season three kind of gets to an end. So we kind of have these milestones that come up every month or so. Uh, I've kind of been what this lore series has turned into. Uh, For builds with blocks, which is centered around the micro action figures and brick based construction sets in the Halo universe, their latest episode was State of the Mega follow up discussion. So that's of, you know, mega constructs and kind of the state of that company and what they're not the company, but like their involvement with Halo and what's, you know, on the market, what their thoughts and all that going on. Uh, we have Halo TV Plus, the commentary analysis of Halo's original TV show, Halo the Series, and its place within the Silver Timeline. We have a new episode coming out um, this month, and it'll be a little bit of an update on Season 2, and hopefully, you know, future episodes coming after that. Halo Book Club, thorough discussions on the extended lore media. We just finished our last short story for Halo Fractures, which is the untitled story. And our next book club will be Vertical Umbridge, which is the first of the Halo Waypoint story blogs that have been coming out pretty much every season with the uh, multiplayer. And our last show, HTS Pro Talk, where Josh and Will discuss the latest information within the competitive Halo scene with an emphasis on community every week. They have a digest for us for the month of April, and we will roll that clip now. Hello, podcasts of all Donnyets, and welcome to Inside HCS, your monthly recap of all things Halo Esports, presented by us, none other than HCS Pro Talk, your weekly Halo Esports podcast. For this segment, we'll be recapping the HCS news and competition from the month of April 2023. But, as always, before we get into the recap, let's begin with a little introduction to what exactly is the HCS. The HCS, or Halo Championship Series, is the umbrella in which all Halo competition lives under. The 2023 HCS season has officially begun, with regular online and LAN competition happening all throughout the year. For all major announcements from the HCS team over at 343 Industries, please make sure to follow their Twitter account, at HCS, and their official YouTube channel by searching for Halo Esports. As we get started here, I have one piece of HCS news to give you for the month of April. And that is not even an official piece of news because I want to give this opportunity to give a huge shout out to Halo Data Hive. And if you don't know what Halo Data Hive is, it's kind of like a stat. It Well, it is. It's a stats website that you can go to and check out all of your Halo Infinite ranked stats if you are interested in that type of information. Not only does it include personal stats, but also if you are interested in the competitive scene, then you can head over to halodatahive.com and you can check out all scrim results, tournament results um, for series that are being tracked, pro players, teams, whatever it may be, it's all there. And the re- one of the big reasons why I wanted to shout out Halo Data Hive here is due to all of the updates that he's been providing to his website. There was a big shakeup with the Halo API and whether or not Uh, not only Halo Data Hive, but other third-party utilities that utilize Halo's API, uh, if they're going to continue or not. And because we're all just basically wondering, is 343 going to do something, or are they going to let this collapse and have all these stats and all this information die off with it? Well, luckily, at least for the time being, things are still continuing on, so much so that Halo Data Hive has really come back into the fold and really just put a ton of new updates into his website. So please, if you're into anything Halo statistics wise, please check out halodatahive.com. And again, that was really the only piece of news that we had. But for tournament highlights, the HCS Open Series 4K took place over the last month. And for those who don't remember what the 4K is, when you compete in an official online or just an official Halo tournament presented by the HCS throughout the year, you get what are called points. And those points are used for seeding, and that's basically what it comes down to. And uh, the online competition leading into the LAN competition 
there are two Ks and four Ks where there, there are two Ks. So that's 2000 points. And then four K is 4,000 points. So obviously the four Ks mean a little bit more competitions, a little more stiffer. So a 4K took place over the last month, and here are the results. For Mexico, Luminosity, shocking literally no one, is still on top in that region. For Australia and New Zealand, Divine Mind are back on top of the region, with Mind Freak being dropped down a peg. For EU, Quadrant hosted their own 4K, and therefore Quadrant won their own 4K. And of course, it was Quadrant and Navi in the grand final, as typical. But for North America... And what was one of the most crazy weekends of online competitive Halo, we had FaZe taking the tournament win. But it was no easy feat, with the newly reforged Complexity taking FaZe to task and eliminating some major players in the tournament, including G1, and they also sent Optic Gaming to the loser's bracket. There is so much more to talk about with this tournament, and if you're interested, we highly recommend checking out episode 284 of HCS Pro Talk, where we break down the entire tournament. As for some highlights, Native White placed top 12, their worst since Charlotte. Sentinels placed top 8, continuing their mediocre trend. SSG, while not really being an online team, placed only top 6. And Optic also placed top 6, their worst placing of all time with this current roster. So please, again, I implore you, if you're any at all interested in the craziness that took place during this 4K, Please go check out episode 284 of our show, HCS Pro Talk. It's, it was unbelievably insane. But as we look ahead, the HCS Open Series continues. With the points meaning more than ever before, and there only being a single 2K and 4K remaining before the first Global Invitational of the year, teams in every region are going to be fighting for the top spots and in the invitations to compete on LAN at DreamHack in June. FaZe will be hosting the North American 4K with a qualifier on May 7th and the finals taking place the weekend of May 12th or the 13th, which subsequently also makes this the DreamHack qualifier. And thank you for joining us on this edition of Inside HCS for April 2023. If you're interested in finding out more about these tournaments or anything else in the competitive Halo space, well, then check out HCS Pro Talk and all the socials, YouTube, Twitch, and anywhere you happen to find your podcasts. Podcast Evolve Crew, take it away. Thank you, Josh and Will, for this month's Inside the HCS. Watch their show live every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central on twitch.tv slash hcsprotalk. And you can also follow them on YouTube and your favorite podcast feeds. And that's our digest for episode 300, guys. Yeah, so 300 down, almost you know, over 600 total across all of our shows. I guess we'll have to see what, where we are once we hit 1,000. I mean, that's a long road ahead of us, but that's kind of like the next huge milestone, I'd say, is a thousand episodes. I hope Halo lasts another th- to a thousand episodes and we don't outlive it. Maybe we just do a thousand and that's just our last episode. And we just inch our way on to that point. I used to joke sometimes that we could outlive the franchise and now it's like a, a scary reality and I'm like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's not, I mean, there's a few Halo podcasts out there, but like, uh, there's a lot from years past no longer record. And those that are active right now are still relatively young. So, yeah, we have outlived uh, a lot of giants of the past, and we could be in danger of outliving the franchise as a whole. So, we will see. Um, we will just have to s- slide sideways. We do need Halo to kind of kick back a little bit because ourselves, I mean, we're not doing the weekly commitment that we usually do. So we we are kind of teetering on our way out as well, if you want to think about it that way. Yeah, we're we're going to have to evolve the show into something else. I guess we'll just always fall back on a D&D style game set in the Halo universe. Because if we don't do that, then we have to do the Assassin's Creed podcast. We might also do a mission debrief for Gears of War because I've talked with Ian because he's never played them. So we might do those co-op that could also like be a thing but then we've really like gone off the reservation in terms of halo <laughs> yeah well that'll be a discussion for another day let's wrap it up here we've we've gone quite long enough for episode 300 thank you for joining me aaron like i mentioned at the top of the show 
uh, the listeners can find every episode to all of our shows on the website evolvedhalo.com or you can search their unique podcast feeds on your favorite podcasting service. If you want to listen to everything all in one feed, you could just follow Halo Podcast Evolved. Once again, another special shout out to all of our patrons. Thank you guys so, so much for supporting our show and making all of this possible. Head over to patreon.com slash Halo Podcast Evolved to learn more and to listen to our Patreon exclusive show, I Would Have Been Your Podcast. And finally, if you want to leave us a voicemail about this episode or another episode or about anything Halo related, you can give us a call at 205-EVOLVED. That's 205-386-5833. It's a Google number, and we will listen to your your recording and play it on a show. And with that, I have been your host, Oren, and until next time, Evolved. Evolved.